Hello, and welcome to another edition of Spoken Voices. We hope everybody's doing okay in the ever-going pandemic, and we hope everybody's taking care of themselves. Uh, today, our guest is Brandon Martinez. He just happens to be my stepson, which is the producer's son. And uh, we wanted to have Brandon on to let everybody know what a young person is doing during this time. and give you a little bit of information about who he is, what he's doing. Uh, he is an entrepreneur and he, he's doing his, uh, trying to start his own business. And uh, I'll let him introduce himself. Hey, Brandon. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> uh, Brandon Martinez. I am uh, 23 years of age. I am interior trimmer by trade. I've been doing it since I was about 17, going on 18 years of age. And it's the craft that I love to do. Um, it's calming, it's a great trade, it brings in great finances, and it makes you meet a lot of great people in your endeavors. So I've kind of migrated up north to Connecticut to actually get my business going and you know, get my tools situated and build my clientele. So you're only 23. Yes. Right? And you're originally from where? Newark, New Jersey. Okay. So. At 23 years old, normally 23-year-old kids are basically having a problem trying to figure out what they want to do in life, mm -hmm. right? What kind of pushed you a little bit quicker than the average kid to kind of know where you want to go? What, what was it that you, one day you woke up and said, you know what, I'm going to not do the normal nine to five and just, you know, go out on my own and have my own business? Well, it's definitely an early struggle. Um, I moved out early around 18, 19. So getting into the early mindset of trying to be in the dev, paying bills, I was meeting a lot of people in my trade and I had the proper influences around me in terms of business owners and people who achieved a lot of things in their lives. So at just a young age, I just adapted to the, what they were kind of implementing and the lifestyle they were living and the mindset that they would have. And especially my own personal drive from where I'm from and the things that I've been through in terms of me wanting more for myself and my future kids. So um, the personal drive brings everything along. And at just 23 years of age, I just realized how much I've learned since I was 18. So it's, I, I've elevated to a journeyman carpenter now. And in my journey of meeting other contractors and being in different businesses, I learned how experienced I am. So um, once you kind of have those keys of having the proper influence and the drive, and a trade that can take you somewhere, it's kind of comes down to the individual and I think comes down to what I can do, what right. I can make happen. So, uh, full di disclosure here, me and mom tried to get you to uh, come with a super trade, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you was emphatic <laughs> and say, no way, I'm going to be on my own, I'm yep. not leaving uh, Newark, uh, New Jersey. And you told us, no, we were a little disappointed because we worried about you, right? So once we found out that you were doing what you were doing, and it, basically, how did you get into this, though? Well, you know, get into carpentry and wood and, and you're just fixing stuff up. I know the answer, but how did you really start doing this? Well, I, my first kind of hands-on experience with carpentry was in my, when we moved up to Perdam, when I was to go to Texas. Mm -hmm. I had, um, it was a trade school, you know, you had certain classes like HVAC and H HVAC, um, culinary arts, you know, and mm -hmm. they had carpentry there. And my mentor was my high school carpentry teacher. Wow. I'm hating each other and loving each other by saying I remember. <laughs> I remember having to go up to the school. I was getting kicked out a couple of times. I was yeah. young. <laughs> <laughs> but he kind of was headstrong with me and he saw the potential in me. So mm -hmm. you know, it, was, it was a nice touch. He taught me how to do drawings and do proper measurements and how to cut safety on saws. So I didn't understand it then, but it was a good initiation point for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I started after after high school, I got into landscaping, you know, FedEx, you know, just a daily, you know, hardworking job, paying the bills. Mm -hmm. And then I got laid off and I found an apprenticeship on the website. So. Within like a three day span, I got laid off from this landscape job on a Thursday. I got interviewed Friday and I started on a Monday. Mm -hmm. And the guy, Mike, was very intelligent. You know, he had, um, he looked, he was in a good financial standpoint. He was very respected. So, in terms of a trade, I saw it as something that 
it could take me places. Right. So once I started taking that, you know, from high school up until the apprenticeship, you know, the more I learned, the more I started to feel respected and I started to gain more <clears throat> compensation and I loved what I was doing. So once you have the own personal drive and determination, it really got me to where I needed to be today. Right. So, because I remember, um, again, going back to high school, I remember I never knew that you were that into it because mm -hmm. it didn't seem like it at the time. No. You know, it, it didn't seem like it, it was just something that you were good at, mm -hmm. relatively, you know, good at, and I had no idea. Once I found out that, you know, the guy that you were working with in Princeton. Yeah, Princeton and Drift. And when we spoke to him the day we had, had to drop you off one day, and he was telling us how impressed he was that a guy who's been doing it for so yeah. long and doing it on a high level, you know, I really started thinking, you know, my God, you know, mm -hmm. he ain't crazy. He's, <laughs> <laughs> He's a young tree. I was so. like, wow, maybe we can leave him. It, it was an odd comparison for us just because my background, you know, he was a um, Caucasian male from his background, so people mm -hmm. would just see – it was like yin to yang, you know. Right. When we worked, it was such a understanding of respect with, and genuine love that mm -hmm. he had a student who wanted to learn so much, and I had a teacher who was willing to teach me. So mm -hmm. we could develop a partnership and a companionship that once I started, you know, we had a business that fell through, and he had another investment opportunity he brought me along with him just because right. we were so good at producing and, you know, our production was quality quantity mm -hmm. in the in the time and timely fashion that we would do it so you know once I started going into other places and seeing all the work that I was taught compared to other people's work which is acceptable to some contractors mm -hmm. I just started to realize how much of an elite carpenter he has birthed into myself at that point right and like I said it, it's you're 23 mm -hmm. and I find that when you ever find that someone who is that young and that focused on what they want to do, it, it's it's like a diamond in the rough, you know. And and that's something that you know me and your mom is always you know very proud of you for doing. Um, in this pandemic, you're 23. It's got to be hard, yes. Knowing that you know the things that 23 year, old, year olds do, you go out, you have a good time, you're around a lot of people, mm -hmm. and whatnot. How are you coping? Well, the code is kind of forced people to think outside the box, you know, mm -hmm. especially in terms of creating blockages in certain places where I was getting money and bringing things in and getting jobs. Mm -hmm. So it kind of forced me to think and think about, okay, instead of working for someone who's trying to strive for their business, think for myself in a sense and where I can create work for myself and how can I use this time to think about what I need to do for myself and plan. So when I can't act, you know, I have to think of a strategy, get things in order, step-by-step -step versions of things. That way when the corona hopefully but it eases off a little bit, I'm just ready to initiate my plans and get it going, mm -hmm. and get right into the business standpoint and getting my jobs going and getting my flow of money coming. Mm -hmm. Well, in Connecticut, I can, you know, you've been here for a little bit, a couple of weeks, right? Three, yes, four weeks? Right. Two, three weeks. Two, three weeks. And you see the, the houses and, and so forth and all the stuff that the opportunities out here for someone who's into uh carpentry and 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 uh in that industry mm -hmm. has a lot of opportunities to go out here and do something really good Limited. you know and again you know i, I can't emphasize this enough if it's a 23 year old who's basically thinking about and and, and trying to apply himself with his own business mm -hmm. not working for someone you know, not doing a regular nine to five and going out and say, okay, I'm going to get, yeah, I'm going to get this paycheck every week and whatnot. This is somebody that's thinking outside of the box. Now we have, uh, how many more kids we got? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Between the two of us, we have five yeah. children. Um, yeah, we know. They're always going to be children sure. uh, to, to me. I mean, that's, that's the kind of yeah. father I am. Always be the baby. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but you and you and your brother, right? You guys also do music. Yes. Right. You guys are really another thing that you guys have taken very seriously. You're not playing with it. You know, it's not just a hobby. You guys are doing this on a serious level, right? The studio and all that stuff. Want to talk a little bit about that and how that started? Well, music's kind of just 
helped our relationship as brothers and in terms of the family aspect is what we loved about the music, you mm-hmm. know, um, writing time, coming together, going to the studio, calling, you know, mom and step pops to come through and have the family aspect of having everyone together. Mm-hmm. And it's just the passion of just not being understood in certain areas in your life. So um, we really would just get in the studio and just write about topics that we felt we need to get off our chest. So right. In terms of music, it's it's a genuine passion for it. You know, we both love music. Mm-hmm. And once we started getting into it together, it was just, it was a natural feeling. And, and also, there it was therapeutic for us to a certain extent. You know, we'll go to the studio, we'll be stressed out, and it'll be a nice, calm environment where we can just control the dynamic, control how we are setting the tone for the mood if we want to be aggressive or mad or sad. And right. Nobody else can determine the, the tempo of that studio mm-hmm. environment other than us. Right. So, you know, it's something that we love to do. So what what was your what is your motivation behind that? And because I, I talked to the both of you a lot. Mm-hmm. And you know, in order to do music, it has to be passion. Mm-hmm. It has to be passion. It, it you know, with everything in life, but music in, in particular. Mm-hmm. It has to be a passion. What is your, how did that passion start with you? Well, I didn't even realize how I genuinely always had music around me. Mm-hmm. Um, the passion really started after the passing of my father just because mm-hmm. it was a, a way for me to escape in my own way and write music. And right. when I didn't have people listen to me, I can have the paper and pen listen to me. Mm-hmm. And then in terms of, you know, my dad being a DJ, you know, he always mm-hmm. implemented that music. Right. He would play it in the house all the time. And my mom, you know, being a salsera and dancing the salsa music. Right. And then, mm-hmm. you know, my stepfather, of course, you mm-hmm. implementing the blues and the jazz into my life. Mm-hmm. You know, my stepbrother, Nate, implementing the old school hip hop. So right. I was kind of molded around a very good, solid foundation of music. In my mm-hmm. life. So, you know, the passion was always there, you know going on road trips with us, going to Virginia. Right. You know, um, being in cars with Nate, him showing me, oh, you know, some of his old, the locks or Jay-Z or DMX type of things. You right. Know? So in terms of, the, you know, I, I love music. Mm-hmm. I love it. You know, I always grew up dancing to music, having great times, going to DJing events with my dad, you know. Mm-hmm. So the music is just something that came to me in a sense. I, mm-hmm. think, I feel like music found me, music helped me and saved me in a point where I right. needed you know, a companionship that I didn't have at that moment. Right, and and it, it's uh, it was in both families before. Yeah. You know, it, and it's almost like a uh, it, um, a meeting and a soup that you mm-hmm. put together mm-hmm. and whatnot, and, and everybody and we're coming in from it from a, a such a different you know genres of music mm-hmm. and whatnot, which is great. And because when I was when Nate and Megan was growing up, I always made sure I played a lot of stuff. You know, yeah. from influential, from jazz to rock to uh, salsa and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. We, I tried to get them to understand music itself and whatnot. You've been in, you've performed. Yes. You, you, you and they have performed SOBs mm-hmm. in Manhattan. Good. And we were just talking about that the other yeah. day. That I was trying, I was telling you, I said, "Yo, you know, you know, I don't know if you know how historic SOBs is." Mm-hmm. I mean, the people that played there, you know, and I know eventually, years down the road, I'm telling you, it's going to sink in and go, when I first started out, I, was I actually, yeah, I actually performed. Yeah, it was a great time. Yeah, you've been up in Hartford. What was the name of the place? Uh, Walling, I think it was the Wallington Center, if I'm not mistaken. Was it? Yeah, yeah it, it was, was a club that we, we got a chance to go see mm-hmm. you guys perform and whatnot. It's, it's, it's such a... It's so it's such a different vibe, man. When you go and, and you see, it's like, oh my god, I can't believe these guys are seeing in person. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's crazy or whatnot. So, what do you look for, and what are you hoping for in the future? With I, we know what you want to do with your business. What do you want to do, and how are you going to be able to uh, juggle the two? Because both are really demanding. Well, I have to put one before the other. I think. Mm-hmm. In terms of the two lanes that I've taken and being an entrepreneur and being a music artist, mm-hmm. as of right now, we need to give one or the other 100%. And to think logically, in order to be an artist, I need funds and I need finances. Right. 
And if I have a great trade that can create something likely to be financially free as in carpentry, mm -hmm. I kind of just thought of a formula in which I can give one hundred percent to basically help boost the other's platform. Right. So if I take a big step within a year or two and you know get my clientele and get my business together and get mm -hmm. those and those nice flow of checks and where I build my clientele and get my money coming and I can, you know, build my own studio. You know, I can, you know, do my videos when I want. I can get the outfits and mm -hmm. do the cover arts because being an independent artist is not cheap as well as paying bills. So, right. You know, I'm, I'm glad to have this trade and I'm glad to have the mindset of thinking, you know, be an entrepreneur, I can control my own time frame. You know, when I want to record, when I want to go to work, when I want to day off. And, right. You know, in times of, Juggling the two, I try not to. I tried not to stress myself out and so just think of a nice formula right. that would basically help everything come into fruition for me. Can you can you uh, ever imagine yourself going back to a nine to five? Job? As of now, no. <laughs> I don't think, and I'm happy at 23. I can say that. I right. <laughs> can, can you imagine waking up at like seven o'clock, getting ready, putting on the suit and stuff, mm -hmm. and going to work? I still wake up at seven, but yeah. I wouldn't wake up at seven for myself. Right. My own drive. Mm -hmm. You know, I just I've taken in an, an enormous amount of information that I feel like mm -hmm. it's at this point it's inevitable. It's just up to what I want to do with the blocks I've set in front of me, right? And what I want to create, and my foundation mm -hmm. is I want to be an entrepreneur, right? You know, not that a nine to five is bad, but you know, I've done it for a certain amount of time, and I've ta taught myself that I can be my own boss. Mm -hmm. You know, I like like to be my own boss. You know, I like to be in control of myself. I can represent myself, and if there's any fall or any issue, you know, I can basically handle any issues that's in to do with my business because I'm in control of everything and no one else is. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know because of your personality and because of the things that that you you guys have and I, I, I can all five of you. Mm -hmm. Right. The, the thing that you guys must gotta understand too is that because you feel that way and because you have a, a idea, a plan to do something, the responsibility that you all have is to pass that on yep right and when you find someone who is younger than you you have to pass on what you know yep. to them because there are too many of there's too many black and latino kids out here that are basically at your age and and even before they get out of high school mm -hmm. you know and though i knew when you got out of high school and, and all the kids when you got out of high school you're just kind of like oh man I don't, I don't have that structure anymore. What am I going to do? It didn't take any of you long to say, okay, I got to make a decision on what I want to do. But I tell you, all you guys, this is that you have to be able to pass that stuff on to someone who may need it. Yeah. You know, so when you find somebody who you may look at and you may say, hey, you know, I know this kid or whether it's a cousin or a friend of a cousin or whatever, and this person needs a little bit of work, you know, you got to kind of pick up and you know. try to influence them. Yes. You know, definitely. I believe yeah. it's all about someone's legacy and what you leave and mm -hmm. like you remember. If it's not only through your children, but your influence on nieces, nephews, you know, kids mm -hmm. that you meet along your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, it's, it, you know, it's funny. It's, it's all nieces now. Somebody got to give us a grandson. Not now. You're too oh, young. God. I don't even want to. I don't want to even get into taking my time. Yeah, I don't care if you're 35 or whatever. We're 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 running high on little <laughs> girls in this family, and we know that's going to be a trip as they get older. Yeah, and and we got a lot so of us. So how are you liking it up here in Connecticut, man? You love Connecticut? My God, it's peaceful. It's a different scenery. Mm -hmm. It's opportunity. So once I feel a sense of opportunity coming about. You know, mm -hmm. I'm very excited, I'm very driven, I'm very determined, something I've always been, and I'll continue to be that. I'm a New Yorker, so it took me when, cause I grew up in the Bronx and Harlem and stuff, and then eventually my family moved up mm -hmm. here. I was probably in third grade, mm -hmm. but we kept, every summer we had to go back to New York mm -hmm. and stay with my aunt and my grandmother for the summer. So I was never, until now really, mm -hmm. really, comfortable being here because i was always going back and forth mm -hmm. and that new york stuff in me as a young person and again i'll go back to my childhood when i was 23 years old i had moved back to new york and the last thing on my mind was starting my own business and whatnot to my detriment yeah. right 
I was running around like a fool, mm -hmm. like a typical 23 year old fool mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. So it's really, I'm glad that me and mom and, and your mother and, you know, uh, Paulette and everybody has basically stepped up and always been a positive influence in your life. You know, your dad and stuff like that to be able to tell you to stay focused and whatnot. You know why we do that? Mm -hmm. Because of the crazy stuff we did. Yep. yep. The the mistakes that the mistakes that we made, the missteps. We never wanted you all to do the same thing yeah. and have a better head on your shoulders than we did at your age. And I, I I can't emphasize this enough. I'm amazed with you guys a lot of the times to see you guys have that drive to do the things that you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, to be able, and for you, to be able to go into someone's house, and you know that your person's house is their sanctuary, yeah. and they give you, you know, carte blanche to go in there. And mess it up. And, and mess it up, before right? Before it gets pretty. Right, before it gets pretty. You know, and I know when you tell most of the people that you, that, you know, the houses you've gone into, the homeowners and whatnot, if you tell them your age, they kind of look at you with a crooked eye like, yeah, you know, this, this kid is going to mess with my stuff. He's going to come and put some stuff in my house. You so know. they see the work that I provide. Yeah, guys, if you see this kid's work, it, he, it's beyond his age. It's beyond uh, what you would think a 23-year-old was doing. And for me, as a stepdad, going up to class, or his school, when he was in carpentry and all that stuff, I had no idea that he could do this work simply because <laughs> he was always getting in trouble. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, do you have a uh, email that 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 somebody could? Oh yes. If anyone would like to contact me, I am Interior Trimmer. I specialize in base molding, shoe molding, crown molding. I install doors. I do custom built-ins uh, from laminate flooring to demo as well. You could contact me at Martinez M A R T I N E Z B M seven two five at gmail dot com. Hit him with it one more time. Martinez BM 725 at gmail.com. We're so happy you're here and you will be back yes, we will. with your brother. Yes. 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 The next one will be you and your brother, and hopefully your sister will participate this time, but she's tired because she runs around too much. Yes, yes she does. Anyway, and as always, when we leave, we always say, man makes plans, God smiles. We hope everyone has a safe and happy weekend and just keep following what you need to do to stay safe. Have a good one. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.